All right, welcome back. We're heading into chapter six. It's starting to get pretty interesting now. Okay, let's start off with uh, this one is Mullah Hussein's mission, 1843. Mullah Hussein was one of Sayyid Kazim's most trusted disciples. He was away when his teacher died, having been sent on a special mission in Isfahan to tell a famous religious teacher there about the coming of the Promised One. This famous teacher was known to be difficult and opposed the teachings of Sayyid Hakmad and Say Sayyid Kazim. It would take someone brave and knowledgeable to convince him of the truth. Mu Hussein was both of these. By the time he arrived in Isfahan, he was tired and hungry, but he went straight to where the religious leaders were taking were talking to his students. These students, they all came from rich families and were dressed in expensive clothes of silk and velvet, whereas Mul Hussein wore a simple cloak made of camel hair. And uh, oops, one page of camel hair, and he was covered in dust from his long journey, but he did not hesitate. He walked into the room and he stood opposite of the teacher. Listen, O Sayyid, Sayyid, to my words, he boldly proclaimed. The teacher, Sayyid Muhammad Bakur, looked at his young visitor in surprise. His students were annoyed at this scruffy person interrupting their highly respected teacher in the middle of his lecture. But there was something about the sincerity of Mullah Hussein that made the Sayyid agree to hear what he had to say. Mullah Hussein explained so beautifully that the teachings of Sayyid Ahmad and Sayyid Kazim that the Sayyid's eyes filled with tears. For three days he asked Mullah Hussein questions, and at the end wrote a letter praising the teachings of these two great men, saying he believed in them. He told Mullah Hussein that he could show the letter to everyone he met. When Mullah Hussein left the room for the final time, the Sayyid told him that told the, told one of his students to follow him to see where he was staying. Mullah Hussein walked through the streets of Isfahan until he came to an inn where travelers, where travelers and poor people stayed. The servant saw him go into a room that had nothing in it except worn mat on the floor. Mullah Hussein began to pray, thanking God for helping him to explain the teachings of Shaykh Ahmad and Sayyid Kazim to the important Sayyid. Then he laid down to sleep on the mat with nothing to cover him except his cloak. The servant returned to tell his master where Mullah Hussein was staying and how poor he was. The, the Sayyid sent the servant back to the inn with a gift of money for Mullah Hussein, but Mullah Hussein refused to accept it. He said that his greatest reward was that the fact that the Sayyid had, had so fairly listened to him and believed what he had said. Sayyid Kazim was delighted when he received when he later received a letter from Mullah Hussein saying what had happened when he met the Sayyid. He sent a letter in return praising his disciple for being so successful in his mission. Mullah Hussein treasured this tender and loving letter from his teacher. By the manner in which it was written, he knew that Sayyid Kazim was also saying goodbye and that they would never meet each other again in this world. He was right. By the time Mullah Hussein returned to Karbala, Sayyid Kazim had died. When Mullah Hussein arrived back in Karbala, he comforted his fellow disciples, <clears throat> who were heartbroken because of the death of their teacher. They were very relieved to see Mullah Hussein, whom they knew would look after them. If you claim to be the promised one, they told him, we will believe you and do whatever you tell us to do. God forbid, exclaimed Mullah Hussein, you should never have said such things. He knew the promised one would be far, far greater than he could ever be. He asked what Sayyid Kazim's last instructions had been. They repeated all that Sayyid Kazim had, had said about leaving their homes and scattering far and wide to look for the promised one. Why then, asked Mullah Hussein, are you still here? They made all kinds of excuses, so Mullah Hussein left them. He went on to a place outside to the outside the town where his brother and nephew were, 
and they spent 40 days fasting and praying to God, asking to be guided to the Promised One. At the end of the 40 days, they felt guided to go to a sea town in the south of Persia called Bushehir. Unbeknown to Mul Hussein, this is where the Bab had once lived for five years when he worked for his uncle. Because of the prayers of the Bab had said in that town, it felt very spiritual. But Mul Hussein felt that God wanted him to go on searching. It was, as, it was as if a magnet was pulling him a little further north. So the three of them set off again, this time to the town of Shiraz. There's a little picture there you can kind of see. He'll pull a little picture. So that's the end of chapter 6. Next week we'll come back and we'll start with chapter 7, the Declaration of the Bob. This is getting good now.